So you've got the trials coming up in Houston, and you've had some great success in Houston, and you, I'm, I'm sure you're pretty excited about running there again. Will you do anything, in a marathon between now and then? I'm thinking about possibly doing a fall marathon, um, simply for the reason of I feel like I'm playing with a new deck of cards, so to say, right now, like having got rid of the parasite and gotten these health issues kind of resolved, and they're continuing to be resolved. You know, it's with your thyroid stuff, that, that takes time. Yeah. Um, it's not like an instant fix. Um, I guess Carl Lewis had a similar issue um, during his career. Um, so with this kind of new deck of cards, I'd like to, to take another test drive. And uh, I feel like, uh, like I was talking about the importance of racing and every time learning how to race against these guys. And I'd love to take another swing in a major marathon before the Olympic Games and not, not at all assuming that I'm going to be in the Olympic Games. I know that qualifying for them is going to be very difficult. Brutal, yeah. I'm going to have to have a great day and have great training leading up to it. And I'm in no way taking that lightly. But uh, I would like to take another, another shot at a major marathon before the Olympics. So when you look at your, I mean, you're still a young guy, but when you look at your career, you win the Olympic trials, you go to, a, you go to the Olympics, American record for the half, 204.58. You know, 342.7 for 1,500 through 204.58, that's pretty impressive. When you look at everything you've accomplished already, what's left? Oh, man, there's still a lot to, a lot to be excited by. You know, like, how I've kind of look, learned to look at things is see things as opportunity rather than, like, pressure, you mm -hmm. know? Like, obviously, every time I step on the starting line at Boston, you know, I'm thinking this is the year that I'm going to win the thing, you know, because I, I do believe that, that uh, one year I am going to get that race and, and win that race. Um, so I'll keep, I'll keep showing up there until, I don't know, until I, until I win it or be, become the old man in the picture with the beard. <laughs> be like, this is the year I'm going to win. I'm going to win this. I got my walker all going. I'm going to be good. From 2008, when you ran the 206.7 team, you went 59.43 and then the 56, uh, the um, you know, uh, two. The 206, um, 206 17, you had so much success so quickly. And then from 08 to 11, really there's been a lot of up and down, up and down, the message boards, oh, Ryan Hall is through, and all this stuff. This, do you hear any of that, all of the rumblings? Because really, three, it's been almost like three years yeah. before another huge breakthrough. Yeah, it was, you know, part of me, like the way I see it, like, I I feel like there's something off with my body since I ran 206 in London in yeah. 2008. Um, going into the Olympics, my body wasn't right. I wasn't training. Like, I wasn't absorbing the training as well as I'd like to. And I think, like, this parasite, thyroid issue combination, mm -hmm. I think it's been going on since then. I don't, we don't know for sure. Um, but I think that's, that's why I hadn't been quite to the same level. Not that I wasn't running well, you know, like, I feel very blessed every single marathon I've started. I've and you had great races well. in Boston, yeah. Yeah, like I've never, never really had a bad marathon, I don't feel like. But at the same time, it's, you know, as a professional runner, we're always looking for that little extra 1% mm -hmm. that makes all the difference or 2% or whatever. Um, so I feel like I'm finally kind of back to that 2008, 2007, where I'm, uh, my body is responding well to the training and and uh, back to where it needs to be. So I'm, I'm very excited. You know, timing couldn't be better um, heading into the Olympic year next year. And um, the, the fun thing for me, though, is the Olympics are obviously our biggest goal and our biggest opportunity. But at the same time, Boston's every year, mm -hmm. um, New York City Marathon, Chicago Marathon, Berlin Marathon, these are all like hugely exciting races for us. So um, that, I feel like that's kind of a nice thing compared to track where really it's like, the Olympics is so it's, much bigger it. than anything you actually you, you do in, the, in between. But for us, we have these huge races twice a year that makes it really fun. Of course, the biggest race of all is going to be the relay you're putting together. That's right. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, Bob and I are scheming a big relay. It's going to be fun. We're going to put on a big relay. This is Ryan's idea, though, right after the, London, uh, right after the Olympics in London. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Tell, tell him, him. Tell him. No, you tell him. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking is, Getting Michael Phelps to do the swim. This so, is in Kona at the Ironman. At the Ironman Hawaii, yeah. Michael Phelps do the swim, have Lance Armstrong do the bike, and then I'll do the run. <laughs> See how fast we can go. <laughs> All three guys have pretty developed charities. 
Yeah. And yeah, we do it yeah. as a charity deal? Of course, yeah. We'd all, all do it for our own charities and um, be a good way to raise a one, awareness for that and have a good time at the same time and maybe put a, put a mark out there for those. Let me say that I have a ton of respect for triathletes. Oh, man. Like, I tried a little bit of biking after the Boston Marathon. I was in Stanford. And there's this famous hill that everyone time trials there. Lance Armstrong's tri uh, time trial day. All these guys. And uh, it's a three-mile stretch of road, 3.3 miles. So I went there on a bike, time trialed it, and it took me like, tw like 1950, I think, was my time. Which, I, like, when I was going there, I was like, man, I'm going to kill this thing. I was like, I have, like, the biggest engine right now. And, like, I just thought they'd be a piece of cake, you know? And uh, Lance Armstrong, he time trialed it, 13 something or other. <laughs> <laughs> so after I found that out, I was like, I'm going to leave the cycling and swimming to the pros and yeah, not, not mess with it. So I actually went back a week yeah. later yeah. and ran it. So I was like, I bet I can run it faster than bike it. <laughs> Did you? No, I was like 90 seconds slower on the run, but which actually isn't that far off. <laughs> no, you wrote it and then you were 90 seconds slower running. Yeah. Uh, that's but funny. The, you know, it's funny. The guy who actually has the record on it, from what I hear, is this speed skater cyclist who lived Eric Hyden? Yeah. See, this guy knows everyone. Yeah, sort of a famous guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was a cyclist as well. Yeah, he, he wrote for 7-Eleven. Oh, huge quads. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah.